Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. Last few episodes we've gone ahead and converted this simple application that has two screens here, one that pages characters from a Rick and Morty API. And then when we click on a particular character from the list, we go to the details page here. We've been converting this from a multi-activity application to a single activity application with multiple fragments, abiding by Jetpack's navigation components. And so if you missed it in the last episode, we went ahead and cleaned up the remaining two screens here, implemented them as fragments, and now this entire application is sitting inside of one activity with multiple fragments. As we can see, there's a little bit to clean up here. For instance, the toolbar up here has just the name of our application, which is fine, but then when we click into a particular character, we no longer, or we have basically still the same toolbar, we don't have a back button, and uh, we want to just clean that up a little bit here. So we can very easily do so by checking out inside of our navgraph activity here. We can call a particular function inside of our onCreate, uh, the setup action bar with nav controller, passing in the nav controller that we have gotten from our uh, XML. And then we also need something here called an app bar configuration. And this has a bunch of different parameters here or a bunch of different constructors that we can use, but we are going to use the one right here in the middle that just has a nav graph. So we can very easily reference our nav controller dot graph that will get a nav graph. And now we have basically set up our action bar with the Jetpack navigation components. So when we rerun the application, and we take a look at it. Hmm. We have fragment underscore character list. And if we click on somebody here, we have fragment underscore character detail, but we do have a back button, which is a step in the right direction. It unfortunately does not work. However, uh, we do have it. So what's going on here though in the title? Why does this look so weird and annoying and different? Uh, well, that's because we've told the action bar to set up with a particular configuration. That configuration is coming from the nav controller's graph. And if we take a look at our navgraph.xml, inside of these different fragments, the character list fragment and the character detail fragment, there is one attribute here, the Android label attribute. Now that exists in both of these fragments here. And we can see the first one says fragment character underscore character list and the second underscore detail. And so that is where the name of this title for the toolbar is coming from. Uh, when we navigate to the fragment, the system understands that and therefore it puts in whatever label we have here as just kind of a nicety as part of the library to say, hey, you can define the header if you can, if you can make use of that inside of the XML here, and then you don't have to worry about handling, you know, updating the toolbar and stuff like that. So. This kind of does make sense for us. We can just say character details for our detail fragment. And then in here for the main uh, page, uh, we could leave it at, you know, simple Morty, or we can just say, uh, I don't know, maybe let's just do Rick and Morty characters. I don't know if that's going to fit. Uh, we'll see, but anyway, uh, if we just quickly rerun this here, we'll see that the toolbar updates with the updates that we have set in our nav graph, which is just one more convenient. Oh yeah, we got plenty of room. We got one more convenient, um, you know, thing from this library. So if we go ahead and click on Aqua Morty, because he's funny looking, we see character details here. So now the application is starting to come back together, starting to look completely uh, filled out here, except we don't have this back button up and running. So if we flip over to our documentation here again, uh, I'll link this in the description of the video so you can check it out here. But there is one function here, so we're looking for that we need to override inside of our activity to get that back button working as we would expect. So just simply gonna copy this one in, uh, clean up the invocation of the find nav controller function, and then here we see that the nav or the app bar configuration needs to be somewhere else, uh, some global level. So we're just going to very easily uh, just create a global level for this uh, app bar configuration. It's going to be an app 
var configuration and then we will create that here and then we will just simply do that. Uh, we just need to import this function here. Yeah, I don't know why that, that never works uh, when you just copy and paste it from the documentation, but we have things set up here, right? So not much of a change. We just hoisted this app bar configuration to a global level inside of the activity. And then we override this one function here that should take care of the back navigation, making sure that the, uh, basically asking the app bar config, asking the uh, nav controller, the nav graph, if it can move backwards. And if so, does it know how uh, so if we click on, um, let's see, Albert Einstein here, and we go back or we click on that button, we now can simply just go back as the user would expect. So the navigation here, whoops, the navigation here is complete. Uh, we do have everything functioning the same way that we originally did. And at this point, I think it's just a matter of cleaning some things up here. So as I mentioned, we can just get rid of a whole bunch of this stuff here. So we're just going to remove uh, the activity here, the character details activity. And the last little bit here, the whole reason that we did this uh, so that we can remove these different activities from our manifest file here. So now our manifest, although it was not very large to begin with, has now been simplified even further here to have uh, simply just the nav graph activity. It has the intent filter for the main, the launcher, the single activity for this application. Gone ahead and removed the other XML files and uh, activity implementations. So we'll just simply uh, give this a little bit of a run, make sure that it does compile. If not, we'll clean it up. And then at this point, we are completely migrated from two activities to a single activity with multiple fragments. And that we've made it this far, I think it's safe to say that we've gone ahead and cleaned everything up that we need to. But just doing one last little check here. I don't know, let's find someone a little bit further down the list like this crocodile guy. Wonderful. Hitting the back button here, everything goes back and we are all good. And all right, I think that's going to do it for this one here. A pretty simple one, a pretty quick one. Just going ahead and cleaning some things up here, covering the Android label attribute, and then setting up our navigation and specifically the back navigation here, clicking on the back arrow, allowing us to go backwards and whatnot. So we will just continue on in the next episode. Maybe we get into a little bit of animations from one fragment to the next here, because it is pretty simple to just add in. And so if you made it this far and enjoying the content, please leave a like. I really appreciate it if you do subscribe, if you notice you are not already, just so that you don't miss out on any of the valuable content that will be coming out shortly. And I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.